my friend. My name is Terry Petrovic, and for the past 25 years, I've been teaching, coaching, and training people on how to create a better quality of life through the network marketing profession. You know, today I live a lifestyle that most people could only dream about, but I have to tell you, it hasn't always been that easy for me. Um, what I've come to learn is that success and prosperity have a lot to do with our philosophies, our programming, both on the conscious and subconscious levels. And the truth is, from time to time, uh, we need to seek advice and counsel, if you will, from people who have created what we want to create. Well, I've created this series. It's called Prosperity and the Mentors. And I've gathered together some of the best people on the planet that have actually created what you want to create. My intention is to take you behind the curtain. This is gonna be a real and raw conversation. I want you to learn about what they did uh, when they got stuck. I want you to learn about their routines, their habits, their philosophies, um, what they did to go from not having anything in some cases to massive abundance and wealth. Well, my guest today actually failed five times in the network marketing profession. Then he stepped away from it for a while. For a while. And then he returned because <clears throat> he took a 50% pay decrease, and this was back in 1993. Uh, what followed was pretty amazing. He had a very successful run. Uh, he hit the top 50 earner level, actually retired from that company back in 1999, and has re collected residuals for well over 12 years. Not only that, but he's reached top 10 ranks in five other companies, starting from scratch, not taking people from company to company, but starting over from ground zero. He has a system, he has a methodology, he knows what he's talking about. He's also the best-selling author of the book called Standing Tall, Acquiring 13 Riches, Riches of Life Effortlessly, and a children's book, believe it or not, called Joey the Giraffe Stands Tall. He was named Trainer of the Year out of over 80,000 people. He's the co-creator and the author of the wildly successful Go90 Grow training course, and the co-creator and author of the hugely successful The Master Keys Mastermind Alliance course. Um, back in 2010, he actually released all of his network marketing interests and decided to give back to the industry, become a consultant, and touch people's lives on a bigger level. Today, well, he's semi-retired with his beautiful wife and lives on the beachfront of Kauai, Hawaii. My guest today is the international network marketing legend and the world's laziest networker, Mark Janzuski. Mark, thanks so much for being on the uh, webinar with us today, buddy. Well, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's really been interesting getting to meet someone new in the industry that I've heard of, but never really knew. And, and a couple of little brief conversations we've had have been enlightening. So it's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm always humbled by this. And uh, so thank you. Mahalo, as they say here on the island in advance. Peace be the journey. Well, thanks so much for your time. I know you're a busy man and um, you're just really an inspiring guy, Mark. I mean, your background. Let's take the viewers a little bit behind the curtain and share a little bit about that backstory, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I think, you know, I had two lives as a network marketer. Um, one is a failure and one is a success. And um, I have a business background. I was trained by some of the best companies in the world at what they do. Uh, combined Insurance, uh, uh, Mutual New York, Britannica, and I uh, was a top producer there. And so it frustrated me in network marketing, particularly because of those five failures. Um, all five of the companies turned out to be winning companies. I was with uh, Newskin when they went from 50,000 distributors to 360,000 distributors in 12 months, none of them in my group. <laughs> uh, I was with Herbalife when they went from 50,000 distributors to 864,000 distributors in 12 months, none of them in my group. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I have a, the, I clearly had the ability to identify winning situations, but I, failed in there. And then um, you, you mentioned a little bit, I got hit with uh, what's known as a cluster. I just figured network marketing wasn't for me, but that was my perception. It wasn't the reality. Um, 
And there's a reason for that. And I can touch on that later if you'd like. But basically, uh, in 93, within a 24-hour period, uh, the law changed in the seafood industry and we're all taking a big pay cut, like you mentioned. Uh, my mother went blind and I instantaneously and simultaneously, this all happened within 24 hours, became a single parent of two children. So I was raising two kids on my own, the pay cut, the blind mother, three English setters, uh, you know, it was a full plate. And so I reluctantly took another look at network marketing and drum roll, I was failing again, only this time versus the other times, I was really giving it everything I had. Um, and, you know, going to the meetings and, you know, singing the company song and, you know, waving the company flag, jumping off a chair, screaming my goals, my why, another waste of time in network marketing uh, at the top of my lungs. And, uh, and I, was, I was failing again when I made a tiny, tiny discovery that changed everything. It put me on a track to make two um, discoveries that were remarkable. And they altered the way that I looked at the business, but more importantly, they altered the way that I looked at myself. Mm. And if people are struggling in this business, um, if they're doing okay, but stuck, uh, there's nothing wrong with your company. There's nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with the marketplace. All that's wrong is the perception of self and where you fit into that. Mm. So that's basically, um, you know, what happened uh, and why things changed was a change in perspective, which is not easy. And I think people need to know that, that it is not easy to change the way that you look at things. You know, you can, and, so let me just talk about a couple of things that are a total waste of time. Motivational speakers, total waste of time. Nobody can put your motive into action. Motivation means motive in action. Nobody can put your motive in action. Okay, so... Stop listening to them. Stop buying that stuff. The self-help industry uh, in the United States alone is a $12 billion industry. And they have never, ever, ever, not one of them, have they ever produced one set of quantifiable statistics. Will they tell you anecdotal stories about you know, Mary Lou, who was living in a box under a bridge, and now she's driving a Mercedes. Yeah, they'll tell you anecdotal stories. But it is a hustle. And so stop that, and you'll stop uh, the, the heartbreak and despair of another self-help book that you think is going to make a difference. That's not what's going to make a difference. What makes a difference is the hard mental labor that you have to put in on yourself to change what we like to call the blueprint in the subconscious mind. And I think it's so wonderful what you're doing, Terry, because prosperity begins here, begins here. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really that simple. The, you know, I talk about it in the book standing tall, uh, which has the seven ancient verities in it or seven ancient truths um, is that, the, the, this enigma, this mystery of acquiring affluence, everybody's trying to get affluence. That is why they'll never have it. Hmm. It's not something you get. It's something that you give. You have to give it. And that's the deal. The deal is really this simple. The, probably the greatest essay that's ever been written by far for a network marketer or anybody else that's discontent with anything in their life is Emerson's law of compensation. Uh, Emerson's law of compensation gets, you can reduce it to four words, but if you read this thing every day for 30 days, it'll change. It'll begin to change your perspective. And it boils down to give more, get more, give more fear, get more fear, give more fear of failure, get more fear, fear of failure. Um, I always laugh when I listen to conference calls 
talking about fear of rejection and overcoming fear. It doesn't even exist. Nobody's afraid of picking up the phone. Think about it. Your wife falls down, hits her head on the side of the wall, and she's knocked out cold. You'll instantly go dial 911. You're not afraid to pick up the phone. You're afraid of the results, but not of picking up the phone. And people are so prepared for no in this business, they don't know what to do when, when they get a yes. So you have to get, if you want affluence, if you want prosperity, you have to give it. And the only way that you can give it, because we can't give away what we don't have, is you have to develop it. Mm. And it all begins with uh, gratitude. So the number one tip that I would give to people is every day, write down three gratitudes. Okay, I got about 40 piles like this around my house. Write down three gratitudes a day. Okay, with and do your best not to repeat them. You know, after you get through things like your kids were born and the day your son was born and your daughter and all that, the day you got married and the day you got divorced or whatever, whatever you're great, whatever you're <laughs> grateful for, right? <laughs> whatever you're grateful for, uh, write down three gratitudes a day. And every once in a while, the, listen to this, the average person touches, picks up their cell phone for no reason 18 times an hour mm. in the course of a day. Just to check, ooh, did somebody text me or this or that? What a waste of time. Uh, but anyway, instead of that, break that habit, develop a new habit, keep a couple of these stacks of these gratitudes, just flash through a couple of them, okay? And then shuffle them up, shuffle them up, shuffle them up, set them aside. Every time you go to reach for that phone, reach for that pile of gratitudes. Gratitude is a cause, not an effect. And the more things you find to be grateful for, the more things will pour into your life to be grateful for. This starts affluence. Affluence comes from the word affleure, which means to flow to. So let's tie this in with Emerson's Law, and then you can get me back on track, Terry, because you're in a passion wheel of mine. But basically, um, gratitude is a cause, not an effect. So this will give you more things to be grateful for. And, the, and now you have something to give away. Give away. Give something in every encounter. Give a hug. Give a thought. Augmandino. Scroll to out of the greatest salesman in the world. In silence and to myself, I say, I love you. And when people sense that, they'll see a twinkle in my eye, hear a sparkle in my voice. And what happens is you make somebody's day better. Give them a hug. Give them a prayer. Give them a kind thought. Give them a compliment. Give, 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 and it will wash back over you. This is the road to affluence. The secret to affluence is giving it because Emerson was right. Give more, get more. Give more affluence, get more affluence. Now, here's the caveat. Do not look for it from the channel that you're giving to. Trust universal law. So we're kind of out there, but um, I think it's really important. If you're going to talk about prosperity, it's not something that you seek. It's something that you give. And don't think you don't have anything to give away. Start counting your blessings and read those uh, gratitude cards. Last thing at night before you get in bed should be those cards, not your cell phone. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yeah, that's powerful stuff there. <clears throat> Appreciate that. So during your journey, Mark, have you uh, created any morning or evening ritual rituals? Uh, and if so, would you mind sharing some? Yeah. Um, I think what's really important is, as I was failing that now again in network marketing for the sixth time uh, in, in uh, 93, when I was sort of, you know, I was 44 years old at the time and I'm unemployable, you know, I get problems with authority. So anyway, um, overqualified problems with authority. And so um, I reached for this book, Thinking Grow Rich, which was given to me by this man, W. Clement Stone. 
who wrote the success system that never fails. So I was trained by Stone in 71. Stone built the largest, most successful <clears throat> sales force in history. And when he gave me these two books, um, this is kind of a nice addition. This one's signed by Hill. This one's um, actually signed by Stone. These are very important. So I reached for Think and Grow Rich. And of course, I was 22 years old and, you know, just full of myself. Uh, when I was trained by Stone, I had no idea that I was in the presence of greatness. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Here's a guy with 33, 33 years old, 100 bucks in his pocket. And um, by the time he was dead, um, he had given away over a billion dollars and had a net worth of over two billion. And so that might be someone you want to learn from, folks. Right. <laughs> Any, anyway, anyway, what most people don't know about Napoleon Hill is he was laboring in obscurity, uh, even though the research was done, until he met Mr. Stone. So I was trained by these guys, and that led me to becoming obsessed because I, he, what he said to me was, um, he said to everybody, it wasn't just me personally, these are not books, they're exercises. Mm. Folks, I don't care how much you read, if you're not applying what you read, it doesn't count. Knowledge won't apply itself. Stop reading to sound smart at a convention or at a cocktail party. Because if that's your goal, that's what you're going to get. So um, I work them as an, I work Thinking Grow Rich for the first time. I carried that book for over 20 years and had done bits and pieces of it, but I committed to it. And I studied it and I read and I, I read every day and I sat for ideas every day. And I didn't really know why, uh, but I just decided to follow the directions. And my check started to grow. And, um, and, and you know, then it got up over 10000 a month. And I kept sitting and reading. And these sits became longer. What I mean by sitting is absolutely still. And I'll explain why in a minute. You have to sit absolutely still. So... Everything starts falling into place. And I became obsessed with how did this hillbilly, uh, Napoleon Hill, know what to ask these people that Carnegie wrote the letter of introduction for? Well, as it turns out, Hill was given a book when he accepted the challenge to work for 20 years without pay. Because uh, Carnegie told him, if I'm right and you mine the secrets of wealth, from all these rags to riches stories, you'll be wealthy too. Which again, he wasn't until he met Stone. But as it turns out, Carnegie gave Hill this book, The Master Key System. So to get to your question, here it is. <clears throat> there are two worlds. There's the world without and the world within. The world within creates the world without. Let me say that again. The world within creates the world without. So every circumstance in your life is a result of what you really think, not what you say you think, not what you'd like to think you think, not what you want other people to believe you think, but what you actually think. And what do you actually think? Look at the circumstances in your life. You have created all the circumstances in your life. And let's get to that spouse that screwed you over. Who picked her? Who insisted that she stay? And did she not behave as advertised? Or did he not behave as advertised? It's equal rights here. Okay. We don't want to piss anybody off. So the bottom line is when you can take this difficult but incredibly liberating understanding. Disraeli said, men are not the creatures of circumstances, circumstances are the creatures of men. Uh, these guys met in a mastermind group, Hillstone and all these guys, and they were so proud of themselves because they figured out, um, they reduced the encyclopedia of success down to think and grow rich, and then they reduced it to 12 words. Human thoughts have a tendency to transform themselves into their physical equivalent. So what happens is after about a year of feeling really proud of themselves, they had a good laugh at themselves because they realized 
the master teacher said 2,000 years ago, according to your faith, be it unto you. So my answer to your question is, if is I spend about, and it started in 1994, somewhere between an hour and a half to three hours a day in silent thought. Mm. If the world within creates the world without, what could possibly be more important, there's nothing that's more important than working on the world within. You've got to work on the world within because the world within creates the world without. There's actually a blueprint in your mind and in everybody's mind that you enroll and that blueprint is going to has predetermined your performance and by extension your paycheck. And if you don't work on changing that blueprint, that's the hard mental labor I referred to earlier, you are dead in the water, you are roadkill. You will create the same circumstances here, blaming your upline, blaming the company, that the economy's bad, everybody says they don't have the time, it's a pyramid. None of that is true. It's all here. And, uh, Emerson wrote that the ancestor of everything is thought. And so you've got to get it right. So what I do is I get up about four in the morning and um, uh, I have my uh, vitamins and supplements and, um, and then I read for about 30 minutes. And then I'll generally sit there, Terry, for about, about 45 minutes to an hour. And then I do P90X. And then, you know, I have an organic breakfast and because I've, I've earned it. Okay. Don't eat out of habit. Don't let appetite rule how you eat. Eat out of hunger. And then I start my day. The end of the day ends pretty much the same. About an hour and a half in silent thought. Right out there under the lychee tree uh, with the dog. Just silent, silent thought. So I talked before about um, <clears throat> sitting absolutely still. Folks, you have to you have to sit absolutely still. It doesn't have to be in a particular position. Your back should be somewhat erect, so your solar plexus is open. And the reason you want to do this, sit absolutely still, is you've got to get control uh, of the power. Where is the power? The power is in your mind but you'll never control your thoughts until you can control your body. So learn how to control your body. Get an itch on your nose. Leave the damn cell phone someplace else. No interruptions, a silent thought, and you need to feed your mind. Now, I don't do a lot of reading. Wallace Waddles, who wrote The Science of Getting Rich, Science of Being Well, and The Science of Being Great, he was a big advocate for read less, think more. And then your actions must match the thoughts. So this is the key. You have to idealize what you want. And this isn't that nonsense that was such a big hit for a while, the secret, because they left the one thing out you need to do, the work. Okay? Um, you've got to do the work. But basically, that's what I do. So it's about, I spend approximately two and a half to three and a half hours a day and I have since 1990, I'd say late 94, Terry, on my mind. Mm. Sitting and thinking for ideas, shutting my mind down completely. You've got to get away from the noise. And the best way to start your day and the best way to end your day is holding that ideal. Stay grateful. Learn Wallace Waddles the certain way. Wallace influenced... Um, uh, Hanel, who wrote the Master Key System, which is where Think and Grow Rich comes from. And you don't need more books. You need to study those. Study and apply. Right. Is, that, is that more than you're looking for? Or is that was that perfect. It? That was amazing. I, I was, that was really, uh, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> um, let me ask this question. Um, and I think I know the answer to this one, but has there been a, a, a book you find yourself giving to people over the years to help them improve the quality of their life and their prosperity? Yeah, there is. Um, you know, we, we run a course once a year and before anybody goes, oh, here comes the pitch. Um, 
we take in a certain amount of students every September into the master key system. The, and you, you mentioned it earlier, the master key mastermind Alliance. Uh, but the master key system was actually the book it's based on. And there's 24 lessons in there. Um, and I tell people the same thing stone told me. Um, so depending on who they are, I'm going to give them Ogme and Dino's book, which is a, it's only, it's a very short book, the greatest salesman in the world. Um, and, but I tell them it's a 10 month commitment, um, three times a day. They read the, the, they read a certain section of it three times a day for 30 days, and then they move to the next section and so forth. There's 10 scrolls in there, or I'll give them the master key system, or I'll give them the success system that never fails. Um, it just depends on where they are. Um, but basically, I think the I think the one to start off with is Ogmandito's The Greatest Salesman in the World. Because it's got nothing to do with selling your product. It has everything to do with you selling you on you. Mm. You become the greatest salesman in the world when you make the toughest sale in the world. And the toughest sale you'll ever make is selling you on you. That's the deal. And if you're not sold on you, not one of your prospects is going to believe you. Yeah. yeah. They need the product. They need the money. They're open to it, but they're just not joining. It's because you don't know the difference between collaborating with another human being and feeling worthy of their trust or getting someone in your business. If you're trying to get them in your business, forget it. Right. Right. Totally you agree with that one. Yeah. Um, let me ask this. Have you made a purchase in the last six months for a hundred dollars or less that has had a positive impact on your life in any way? That's a great question. Um, I bought an orchid and grafted it to a stone outside and it's growing and that's had a very positive effect on my life because all, all the answers are in nature. Mm. Um, see, grass doesn't try to grow, it just grows. This is the confusing thing about the way network marketing is taught and that was the discovery in late 93 or 94. I decided to walk away from all these wonderful, marvelous, great spirited people doing their best to teach network marketing, but they didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue. They were just simply repackaging what's never worked. The industry numbers are abysmal, except in little pockets. You find an Annie Feinstein, you find a, a Tom Chenault, and you, you'll find it. So the greatest riches in the world are, is OPM, other people's minds. And, and so, um, so the orchid was like, okay, let me see if I can get an orchid to take to a stone. And so that's added tremendous value to my life uh, because I'm a guy with what I like to call a locust thumb. You know, some people have a green thumb, they can grow anything. I can kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've killed about a hundred bonsai trees, <laughs> but anyway. So this is this is a big challenge. You know, it's a big challenge for me to be patient, to be patient. But um, uh, let's get back to the grass. Grass doesn't try to grow; it just grows. Duplication is the way of the universe. Mm. The plants around you, the grass around you, wherever you're listening to this, your children, you. Everything started as a single cell and it's simply duplicated. It's a natural process. So if you observe it, you'll understand. And so to put yourself in a state of mind that everything is always duplicating around you, then it's easier to get that copying or duplicating going in your organization if you know the trick to duplication. And the trick to duplication is duplication cannot be taught. It's caught. And so one of the ways that we built 
our organization was we stopped teaching duplication and because it can't be, it cannot be taught. I've seen some incredible speakers. They go on for six hours at a Saturday seminar, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, and the beads of perspiration are flying off their forehead. And, you know, they're, they're pouring their heart out. They've given you everything they have. And you go back to the Saturday seminar six weeks later, it's the same size. Six weeks later, the same size. And these people, good, <coughs> excuse me, they got big groups. They're fantastic. They're pouring their hearts out. And <coughs> excuse me. And it occurred to me, it can't be taught. Conference calls get to a certain size and they wither. Saturday seminars, they wither. Biz ops, they wither because duplication cannot be taught. So stop trying to teach it to your team. Uncle Dan, who raised me, said, if you're in a hole, stop digging, okay? <laughs> so so, so uh, uh, I realized it was caught, so we developed a pattern called the 3D pattern. So if I were to sponsor someone in the business, okay, I'm going to build, I'm going to, I'm going to do four things. I'm going to get him a color code. So he's going to go and take a test, not guess at what his color is. Okay. You read all the books you want. Just take the test. Lazy networker, color code.com. It's free. Okay. Lazy networker, color code.com. Everybody says it's about, let me digress for a second. Everybody says it's about relationships. You're talking about personal growth. Well, that's all about relationships. And everybody talks about it on stage and you lean forward and they don't say squadoosh about how to make them better. Okay. So the little hinges that turn the door, the big doors of open relationships is communication. So when I sign someone up, I'm going to send them color code. So I know how to talk to them. Number two, I'm going to set an appointment with them and tell them we never get off the phone without scheduling the next goal advancing or income producing activity. Number three, I'm going to give them my training, which has been the backbone of three uh, successful multi-million dollar earners and two successful network marketing companies. I'm going to give them that training free. Okay. And I'm going to teach them the B9A9 rule. And the B9A9 rule is you got this great training. There's 70 videos in there. Okay. But if you want to make 4,000 a month or 8,000 or whatever they told me, talk to their number. Napoleon Hill taught us a person can't have a thing until they believe they can have it. Yep. Uh, so that's what they believe. So talk to where their self-esteem is and then inculcate them with personal growth and inch them up a little bit at a time. But basically I'm going to do those things and then I'm going to get on the phone with them, build the list with them. Do not assign list building. Never. So build the list with them. And then I say, now what's the last thing we do before we get off the phone? I'm going to verify. I'm going to get their color, make sure they can tap into the training. And I'm going to say, what's the last thing we do before we get off the phone? I'm testing me, not you. If they say, I'm not sure. If they say, if they say, schedule the next activity say you're picking this up faster than most people if they say they don't know i'm gonna say that's on me i didn't do a good job of teaching you take 100 percent responsibility i'm gonna set an appointment and of course what we're gonna do at that point is make three-way calls and i'm gonna tell them the 10 hours a week you committed no conference calls don't get on a single conference call ignore all company emails okay don't in, about groups and this one's teaching this Ignore all of it, okay? Because I own you for those 10 hours. You tell me how many hours, I tell you what we're doing. The B9A9 rule is as far as study and practice, it's before 9 a.m. in the morning or after 9 o'clock at night. If you want to be on a three-year plan, put in an extra half hour a day. Two-year plan, put in an extra hour a day. Within 90 days, you'll have mastered this training. The training is going to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you hands-on because duplication is caught just like a cold, hand-to-hand. -hand. 
Now, when Terry, when you spawn, when we sponsor a couple of people for you, am I going to have Terry get people started? No, he doesn't know how. So I'm going to treat Terry's people as if I personally sponsored them. And I'm going to get them color code, get them in the training. Now Terry's watching me do this. And I'm going to treat their people as if I personally sponsored. Now Terry's seen it eight or nine times in this line, nine or 10 times in this line, and he's ready to pick up the pattern. So that's how you be prosper by going slow. The biggest mistake I ever made in network marketing and my biggest regret was when I made this tiny discovery about how to virtually sponsor people on demand. I sponsored too many people. Um, and I could not give them the attention that they deserve. When you sponsor someone, they're joining you for one reason, to prosper. And what they're really joining for, while, they, while the reason is individualized, the real thing they're joining for is the hope of a different outcome. The hope of a different outcome. Think about that word hope. It stands for help other people evolve. You have to evolve those people. So when you sponsor someone, it is your responsibility, not the company's. Your responsibility to help them evolve. They, need, they don't know what to do. So um, we prosper people by learning what to do before 9 in the morning, after 9 o'clock at night, okay? And we listen to our up team, get people started right. We like to do this over hands-on support. Hands on support. So the way we set it up, it's three simple words, show and tell. Training's going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to show you. And so that's how we prosper people. Um, and it's really a simple concept. Great networkers that <clears throat> prosper and build this business like we do in less than 12 hours a week. Um, they leverage everything they can. So <clears throat> I train by not training. I prosper people by not training. I'm actually training them on something much bigger that they don't realize. So if somebody calls me with a question, I know what video they should go look at. They go look at that. So I might send Mo, Larry, and Curly to that video, but guess what? I know what they heard. I don't have to question it. and say, mm -hmm. oh yeah, objections, yeah, go watch this. Okay, uh, watch video seven in the Hero's Journey module. And uh, what are you doing tonight at eight? Well, nothing, great. I'll, I'll show you how we do it because it's going to come up on the calls anyway. It's going to come up on the calls anyway. I mean, the, the bottom line is if you're doing this business right, more than 50% more than of the people shouldn't even know the name of the company until you're enrolling them. If, if you're going into pay plans and who the founders are and how wonderful they are and they don't kick dogs, you're not going to prosper anybody. Okay. Uh, you're going to bore people to death and you're going to sound like a car salesman, which in fact you are. So not that that's bad. My wife was the number one car salesman at the <laughs> dealership. But anyway, so this is, this is true prosperity is you can't give away, you can't teach what you don't know. And you can't give away what you don't have. So let me get earnest and honest with your audience. Okay, you, when you talk to people, you're talking about them making a major shift in the economic destiny of their family forever. Gosh darn it, learn what to do. And it's not using social media. And, and it's not shortcuts, tricks, and traps. Pay the price, do the work. It's two things, the mental state and the skills. This business is a skill-based business. Right. So we try to prosper people, Terry, by teaching them the skills and we give them away free. And like I was saying about the Master Key course, it's a unique proposition. Um, at the Master Key <clears throat> course, everybody gets a scholarship. Nobody pays for the course. And after five weeks, it's a 26-week course, and it'll put someone in their mind about an hour, an hour and a half a day. And before you go thinking, I don't have the time, you just made an excuse that you're hearing all the time. 
Give more, get more. Keep making that excuse. You'll keep hearing that excuse. So in the Master Key course, what we actually do is give everybody a scholarship. We give everybody a hands-on guide, someone that's been through it and been through five months of training to prosper them. Now, what happens is five weeks in, they vote as a group, should we sell this in the future or should we continue to give it away? And if they, and if they vote to continue to give it away, which this year's class did again, then they voluntarily decide what they want to contribute to strangers that they haven't met yet that'll get the same opportunity to learn how to readjust the blueprint in their mind to total prosperity. Um, person in their life gets down to one or two choices. You see, you either think the world is deteriorating and going to hell in a handbasket, or you understand that everything in the world including you is perfect for where it has evolved to. And the first group will go through life miserable. The second group, it realizes it's a, it's a, it's a personal responsibility and an honor and a privilege to help complete the plan by being the best version of themselves. So I said something about motivational speakers in the beginning. This is how you motivate the team. Go get the biggest, fattest check you can for the people that you personally sponsored, and you'll motivate thousands of people. Mm. When we first started and I learned these skills, I was bringing in about 40 to 60 people a month. It's, you can sponsor on demand, folks. Once you know one little thing, it's like, it's ridiculous. The last deal I built was um, with a company called Zango. And um, I sponsored 17 people into that deal, 17. And uh, five of them were my, my aunts and uncles, Italian family. Um, they all had arthritis in their hands and I thought it might help them. Uh, the company gave me two people that were just customer types because I was at my pin level. I only sponsored 10 people and built a group of 9,500 active reps. We were in the top. Uh, 28, 29, 30 every, every quarter out of 1.25 million reps and did it in less than 12 hours a week. How? I just told you. Mm. Right here, right here. The mind and the skills. Learn the skills because you're talking to somebody about changing, you know, paying for their kids' education or getting them to fire their boss. You're you know, whatever the individualization of that prosperity is, it, that's important to them. But what's important is that you understand that you're actually collaborating with another human being and there's a personal responsibility that you're taking on. So my biggest regret in the industry, Terry, was sponsoring these 30, 40, and 50 people a month. Anybody that's talking to you about sponsoring 20 people a month an alarm should go off in your head. They're lying. Each one of those people is going to fail unless you put a few hours a week into each one of those people. So if you sponsored 20, two months in a row, that's 40 people. That's 120 hours a week. You don't have it. And you know what? Nobody has it that you're talking to that's got a full-time job. 93% of the people in this industry work this according to the Direct Selling Association, part-time. So you damn well better learn how to do this in less than 12 hours a week or you're misrepresenting what you do. And that was the big discovery. That was the big breakthrough for me. I said, I got to learn how to do this in 12 hours a week or I'm misrepresenting who I am and what I have. And um, it all came down to one thing. So we bring them in, Terry. We get their color and all that stuff. But the first thing we start them on is Think and Grow Rich. And we have a little Think and Grow Rich workbook that I'll get you that people can download for free. Um, and so you read Think and Grow Rich and you fill in the workbook, the 13 steps to riches. And that's a way to start to inculcate yourself and move it from being a book into a um, exercise. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Absolutely does. So from a, Simplistic standpoint, if somebody is watching and everything you're saying makes sense, 
but they're struggling with their prosperity thinking, um, what one or two action items would you encourage them to take, Mark? Well, that, that, you know, there's so many great answers to that question that are tried and true, but I've never seen any of them produce anything. Number mm -hmm. one, number one, take a look at your goal statement. Okay. Give it a kiss, tear it up and throw it in the trash. Okay. Because if you are not moving with your hair on fire, that's not what you really want. Mm. Okay. You need to figure out what you want. Now, when we ask people what they want, what their purpose, <clears throat> that's what this book will do for you. It'll help you find in that exercise, that document that um, Terry's going to provide you with, what that will do for you, okay, is it will help you find your purpose. If, if you think credit card debt, getting rid of credit card debt, newer car and all that, think about it. Fixing your retirement, paying off your house. These are all things that cause stress. Paying off those uh, student loans and all that stuff. That is not a purpose in life. I look at these goal statements and let you why for doing the business. And I just want to stick an ice pick in my eye because what, think about what, think about what you have folks. And if this is painful for you, well, as W. Clement Stone would say, well, that's good. He had this high pitched voice and here's why it's good because your list is wrong. You're going to list of what you don't want. You did, listen, if you have on there, you know, I'm debt free. What you're doing is every day you're repeating out loud on a regular basis, debt-free, debt-free, debt-free. And if you happen to get debt-free, that's going to be the emotional hit. And guess what your subconscious will do? It will go get you in bigger debt because you're drawing debt to you. The key in prosperity is you don't get prosperous when you get rid of the stuff that you don't want anymore. You can't Think about it at all. Think about your purpose on the planet, what you truly desire. What do you really want? Okay. Now, for most people, this is almost impossible because of the conditioning. What mommy taught them, daddy taught them, the schools. Don't get me started on the schools. You can be anything you want to be, but you better behave like everybody else. You know, no wonder we're confused, right? The governments, the institutions, and the advertisers, they've conditioned us. And we were talking before we started here. This goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel. They had the right idea. The building of the tower was to try to get higher to the, closer to the source. But it was outside. It was outside. Something external isn't going to make you peaceful, happy, serene, prosperous. It's not going gonna, it's, it's gonna to do the trick. Here's what you need to answer for yourself. What is your bliss? Mm. What puts you in a state of bliss? You got to follow your bliss. So you need to know what your purpose is on the planet. Then have some goals that match that purpose. For example, if somebody wants to uh, have liberty and autonomy, well, they certainly don't want 20 apartments because they have to be someplace. So, you need to pick from the heart, not the head. But most of us don't realize how conditioned we've been to um, be controlled. Okay? I mean, people actually believe we're out of the dark ages. It's preposterous. Okay? I mean, <laughs> we're indentured servants until we decide not to be anymore. You know, you have the right to pursue happiness. You have a right while you're respecting the laws to decide what you want for yourself. So the first thing they need to do, first action step, if you're stuck, is if you don't have a goal statement, well, then you're going to fail. Um, if you have one, that's great. Tear it up and throw it away and decide what your purpose in life is. And that workbook will help you discover that. Second thing is, is condense it down to under... 300 words, write it out, read it out loud three times a day with unbridled enthusiasm because feeling charged with thought becomes a belief. 
here's a major breakthrough for people. This is the blueprint I was talking about. There's thought charged with feeling becomes a belief, action results. And what do we hear at all these meetings? Take massive action, take massive action. Eh, don't ever do that. Because if you're taking massive action as the same person, you're going to get the same massive, you're going to get the same disappointments, only going to be massive. Here's what most people don't know. Both action and results are effects of the mind. Mm. Results and actions are effects. Thought is cause. You've got to work on the thought. So you want to work on the thought. What do you really want for yourself? <clears throat> the best way to complete uh, the involvement of the perfect plan on this planet, remember my assertion along with Jesus, Buddha, Wallace Waddles, Thoreau, Emerson, Plato, Socrates, Disraeli, Emerson, you want to argue with those guys, have a nice day, is that the world for where it's evolved is perfect, and your job, my job, is to, perf is to help with that perfection by being the best version of myself. So what's your purpose for being on the planet? It certainly can't be to pay off your credit card debt and tighten up your retirement and pay your mortgage off so you don't have stress. First of all, if that's all you're thinking about, you're going to draw them into your life. And Terry, you know this as well as I. Most of these people making 15 and 20 grand a month in this industry, they're just broken another level because they haven't learned how to prosper. Okay. Second thing, don't listen to leaders and network marketing companies that are encouraging you to go full time. You need to make two times your regular paycheck before you even consider leaving your job. You're not there to replace your income. And all that money you make, bank that bad boy. Bank it. Just bank it. Third, under no circumstances should you get involved in multiple streams of income. This is a hustle of the con artists that are attacking people in this industry. Multiple streams of income are multiple streams of outgo because to be great, to be successful, to build a huge organization, single eye, not only did W. Clement Stone say it, specialization spells success, it's all Jesus talked about was the single eye focus. Pick one. Are there some wonderful things out there? Absolutely. Pick one and throw your heart into that thing. So a real statement of purpose. If you think you're stuck, stop thinking you're stuck and say, I've, I'm done with my latency period. This is my go time. Find out what your purpose for being on the planet is, okay? And then think only prosperity and see it everywhere and everyone and everything, all the people, all the cars, the grains of sand on the beach, the clouds in the sky, the, 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 this incredible, extravagant creator that we all had that has surrounded us in prosperity that's, that, that's mind-boggling. How do you do that? Start looking around. Write down what you're grateful for every day, and soon the big ones are gone, like I said, and you start noticing these little things. Next step is that I think is really, really important is work on your manners. They're the sugar that all are attracted to. In today's world, uh, you know, when I open a door for someone, they're almost surprised. Work on your manners There's, and be kind. And don't worry about the people that aren't. Start identifying kindness everywhere and everyone and everything. And you'll start to notice the world is just absolutely magnificent. And you are surrounded by kind people. Give them a smile. In your mind and to yourself, tell them that you love them. Give them a prayer. Wish them peace. Wish them prosperity. Wish them health. Wish them everything while you're talking to them. While you're standing behind that woman that normally aggravated you at Starbucks, you know how she stands there and 
She's there for three minutes before she gets waited mm -hmm. on, and then she doesn't know what she wants. Instead of thinking, I want to kill her, say, <laughs> you wish her everything, everything in life that you want, everything that's good, her health, health for everybody that she knows and prosperity. If you start to do this, you develop an attitude of gratitude. And here's what happens if you keep writing out those cards. If you keep writing out those cards, it'll stop being a list at some point and it'll be a state of mind. Mm. And when you become grateful and you work on your manners and you see kindness everywhere and everyone and everything, you'll have moments where you're literally knees will buckle and that you have been surrounded by this prosperity all this time. And all you have to do is hold your hand out and understand uh, about currency. Hold your hand out and they'll get filled. Here's the thing with currency comes from the Latin curier. And what it means uh, it basically is uh, currency is flow. Now, currency has no value if you hold it. I pointed out in um, Standing Tall that seeds held in a hand have no value, but dropped can become a forest. So let's put together a floor, affluere, and curé. Is uh, affluence is to flow to, and curé or currency is flow. You want to be in this flow, and what do you have to give away? Start seeing kindness and start giving it. Open doors. Don't worry about the jerk driver. Look at all those great drivers. Thousands of cars staying in their line, letting other people in. It's incredible. And you'll start to be filled with this flow and start sharing that. You should have seen the ride to work this morning. It was bumper to bumper. And it was incredible. Everybody was just moving along in this beautiful, kind dance. And you'll start to see things start flow to you. And all you got to do to keep them, keep giving them away. Keep giving them away. So those are the action steps. What's your purpose? Manners. <clears throat> kindness and gratitude and this is really Wallace Waddle's certain way it's I not like that it. winners do certain things it's that they do things in a certain way mm. and that certain way is gratitude place your faith only in what you want not in what you don't want that's your purpose okay be kind and make sure that the end user which is people you're enrolling get far more than they expected mm -hmm. for the money. Over deliver the exchange. So when we sign somebody up, they don't know that they're getting this and then they're getting this and then they're getting this. And then we're gonna, we're gonna work with their people as if we sponsored them. And then they're telling their friends, you gotta take a look at this. Man, I'm growing personally. I'm feeling better about myself. And they're doing everything. What do you mean? They make the, yeah, they call people with me. They enroll people. They help them get started. They're talking to me like I've never been talked to before. And you'll get rich beyond your imagination in all 13 areas of life, including money. Mm. That's powerful. Wow. Um, you covered so much there. I really, really appreciate that, Mark. It's uh, incredible. So let's shift the conversation to a couple of lighter topics. Okay. So you had the ability to send everybody a text tomorrow morning about how they could create more prosperity and abundance. What would that short text message say? I'd send two. The first <laughs> one is the first one is believe in yourself. Mm. Okay, which is a really interesting way that we've done it. It's on a keychain that we have. Uh, it actually says uh, your and then believe is in the middle, and then self is at the end, so it's all one word. It's a little, what we call wuzzle, a word puzzle. Mm -hmm. but, so the word believe is in the word yourself, right? Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. You were made first class, by first class, and you're entitled to go first class, as long as you do a first class job of being in service to other people. And the second text would be, success is service. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Um, is there an unusual habit or thing that you love? Yeah, there is. 
<laughs> there is. I I love it. I absolutely love the, the habit of um, of people taking care of themselves, of mm -hmm. their health. You know that 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 they're taking they're taking good care of their health, and and they're taking good care of their mind. That's that's the habit. So the the readers, the meditators, um, the people, I, I would. I would say people that read and sit and do a lot more sitting than reading, by the way. We're not talking about absorbing copious quantities of material, but the habit of feeding the mind is the, this turns me on. Mm. This turns me on. Um, two people that I have incredible respect and love for, we don't agree on hardly anything but they're open-minded and they're in the exchange is just magnificent. It's okay to disagree. Just don't be disagreeable. And so they've, been, they've been great teachers. Yeah. But That's the great. habit of taking care of the mind and the body is I, and it is, and it is a habit. It is a habit. Mm, a very powerful one at that. Well, Mark, you've given us so much information to think about and so much wisdom to share. I know our viewers are going to watch this over and over again, but if somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way for uh, them to uh, connect with you? Uh, they can get um, about a dozen free skills. By the way, I'm really proud to say this. Uh, makes us feel good about us. Um, if they go to worldslaziestnetworker.com, and maybe you can tack a link in there, Sure. .com. You don't have to be fearful. Okay. There's nothing for sale on the entire site. So go over. There's a lot of free stuff there to help you with your network marketing business. Uh, there's 12 videos over there. Um, if you'll just uh, become one of our subscribers. Um, and those 12 videos will tell you exactly what to say in the 12 most common situations of network marketing, since the decision of the person you're talking to is made in less than seven seconds, you damn well better know what to say. So it'll tell you how to talk to someone you haven't seen in 20 years, um, you know, how to start the conversation, how to get people to ask you for a presentation, which changes the 12 very staccato videos that come about every other day. And there's several skills on the site. It's worldslaziestnetworker.com. Fantastic. I've watched many of those videos, and you're right. That's pure gold there, man. I really, really appreciate you giving so much to all of us. So my friend watching, I know you got a lot of value out of this. If you want to uh, get access to other videos like this, other interviews like this, just go to terrypetrovic.com forward slash mentors. And remember this, my friend, you have a choice. Make it a better than terrific day and a prosperous one because you – Yes, you absolutely deserve it. Until next time, bye-bye for now.